Hello and welcome to the next Complete Physio podcast. Um, today we're here with Henry Colasso. Did I say that right? You did. Good. And really looking forward to this one because, you know, for years we've heard about hip replacements, knee replacements, um, very standard operations that are being done thousands, hundreds of thousands of times every day, probably all over the world. They're extremely successful operations, generally speaking. I remember somebody telling me that the hip uh, replacement was the most successful operation done. But I want to talk about shoulder replacements. So, and there seems to be more and more of these being done, but certainly nowhere near the numbers of knees and hips. So should we just start at the beginning, Henry? What do we mean by a shoulder replacement? So any kind of joint replacement, um, like in a hip replacement, you replace the ball and socket with a ball and a socket, and they can be different materials, and there's ceramic and uh, plastic, sometimes it's metal and ceramic, there's different combinations. Um, and a shoulder replacement is similar in that you're essentially replacing the bearing surfaces of the joint, primarily for arthritis if you have worn out cartilage. Mm -hmm. So um, you're replacing the ball and socket with a ball and socket. And just looking at this, yeah. this model of the shoulder, so you've got your scapula and the glenoid is the, is the socket in the scapula, and then you've got the humeral head. And both of these are covered with nice, smooth, shiny articular cartilage. And if that wears out for whatever reason, if you've got osteoarthritis, if you've got an inflammatory arthritis, or perhaps if you've had a previous fracture or mm. a dis multiple dislocations, you can end up with arthritis in your shoulder as well. So post-traumatic arthritis. What you can do, if the pain is coming from the worn out cartilage, yeah. you can replace that joint with, normally with a metal head and a plastic liner on the socket. And yeah. there's different types. In order to do that, you have to have an intact and functioning rotator cuff. Yeah. So your rotator cuff for your small, I don't know what I'm telling you. <laughs> you can tell me. Yeah. Your rotator You're cuff telling your, the audience. Your four muscles anyway, yeah. that come from around your shoulder blade yeah. and wrap around the humeral head. And that controls the position and the movement. And if you have a shoulder replacement, you want it to function just like a normal shoulder. Yeah. But in order to do that, you have to have all the surrounding muscles and tendons and everything else that a normal shoulder has in order for it to work. Yeah. If you don't have that, then if you have a shoulder replacement, if you've got arthritis and you've got maybe a cuff tear, then it's not going to be very successful. Okay. So reverse shoulder replacement is the alternative. Yeah. Do you want to explain what you mean? Because it's, you know, you've talked about a ball and a socket, but what do you mean by a reverse shoulder replacement? So an anatomic um, shoulder replacement, which replicates your own anatomy with a ball and socket, you get a new ball and socket, the reverse shoulder replacement, you have a socket and a ball. Very confusing, Henry. <laughs> and that's, that's in, yeah. in simple so terms. So you reverse, that's all it is. You reverse so the anatomy, basically, don't yeah, you, with a reverse? Reverse yeah. shoulder replacement or a reverse geometry shoulder replacement. I think it's now become such a common operation, we just call it reverse sure. or reverse shoulder replacement. And have you got one here you can show us? We do have a, a model here, which I, I found next door. <laughs> um, and when you have a, a shoulder replacement, so if you have an anatomic shoulder replacement, mm -hmm. you tend to have a stem or maybe even a stemless design, and then you have a, a head which will fit onto that. And then in the uh, in the socket side, in the glenoid, actually this one is pre-drilled as if you're gonna put a socket in there, and that yeah. socket will be cemented into those little... little and that's parts. made out of, that's a ceramic... Poly, poly, polyethylene. Polyethylene, polyethylene. Yeah. You can have someone which have a ceramic head and a polyethylene yeah, plastic sure. um, liner. So reverse shoulder replacement, those components are reversed. So on the glenoid side, you have what we now call a, a glenosphere, which fits onto this side. So the so ball and the, the socket on that reversed. side, yeah. And on this side, you will have a tray, which fits onto the stem. Yeah. And you'll normally, most designs have a plastic liner on this side. So you have a plastic cup and you have a metal ball, yeah. like in a shoulder replacement, but the components are just reversed. Yeah. And the reason for this is it can compensate for uh, instability. Yeah. It can compensate for a lack of any of your rotator cuff muscles mm. and tendons. And it can also help to compensate for bone loss as well. If you have significant bone loss or your anatomy is very distorted, this is also it can also be a good solution. Perfect. So let's just recap on a couple of points. The reason you have 
or consider one of those two things is because of pain, isn't it? It's because your pain is not controlled and you've pretty much come to the end of the road with your injection options and anything else. And then to recap, there's two options. There's the anatomical replacement and then there's the reverse um, shoulder replacement. And it basically is not a decision of the patient, is it? It's really the decision of the surgeon because if you have no rotator cuff or a compromised rotator cuff, you don't have the option to do an anatomical replacement. You have to go for the reverse. Is that a, a fair summary? Pretty, pretty much. Yeah. In that it may give you a pain-free shoulder if you have a painful arthritic shoulder. Yeah. So if you have a, a total shoulder replacement, um, but you have a cuff problem or not, not a completely intact cuff, it can give you a, a, a painless shoulder, but it's not going to suddenly restore your function. Because in right. order to control the movement of that head, you still need your rotator cuff as if it's a normal shoulder. But the reverse is designed so that actually it uses your deltoid as the primary stabilizer, but also the primary mover of your shoulder. And you end up retraining your anterior deltoid, it's the big muscle that wraps over the top of your rotator cuff and over the shoulder. You retrain that to take on some of the work that the rotator cuff is no longer doing, particularly yeah. for elevation. Um, so, so there are some movements you can't yeah. replicate. Some movements yeah. you can't replicate if you have lost your cuff. Yeah. But still, a reverse shoulder replacement. Yeah. Can so be a good option. if I was a patient, I'd be saying, "Well, why don't you just repair my rotator cuff, and then I can have a total shoulder replace, uh, anatomical shoulder replacement?" Assuming that isn't an option, can you discuss why that isn't an option? So sometimes, if you have a small cuff tear, yeah, that is an option. Right. right. You can repair the cuff as well as do the sh uh, an anatomic shoulder replacement. But often, the way that it presents is different. So if you have um, a big rotator cuff tear, by the time you come and see a surgeon, you've, you've often lost the position of the head. So it's no longer sitting in the joint. It's actually drifted upwards yeah. out of the joint. And it's starting to articulate with the undersurface of the acromion, which right, can be yeah. very painful. Yeah. And these patients classically have that kind of hitching yeah. movement to try and elevate their shoulder. Because as soon as they try and elevate the shoulder, the cuff's not keeping it in position. The deltoid can't cope. And they hitch it up under the acromion and then swing the scapula around. Yeah. And it's that which um, you, you you can only really kind of a, solve that with a, with a reverse shoulder replacement. So which, what gets you a better outcome? So if you, because, you know, I see 50-year-olds, 60-year-olds with shoulder arthritis. Um, do you get more movement with a reverse or with an anatomical? What, what would you say gives you your best outcomes? Or is there no difference? So... Well, I'll give two parts to the answer. So there's a lot, the range of movement that you have afterwards, a lot of that is determined by the type of arthritis that you have, right. how severe it is. And also the key thing is the range of movement that you can achieve prior to an operation. Very good point, yeah. Whichever type. So if you've got great movement you before, yeah. you're probably going to come out with the same movement or a bit better after. But if exactly. you're literally down here... The shoulder replacement will make it better, but it may not get you up to here. Fine, yeah. And because there's lots of other factors, soft tissue has to be taken into account. So all of these tendons, rotator cuff tendons, have not moved to this point yeah. for maybe several years. Yeah, yeah. And so the recovery is not immediate. The pain goes immediately. You can often feel dramatically And better. that's really key, isn't like it? This is, this, is, this is to make a shoulder pain-free. That is the primary function of the operation? Pain-free, but also better range of movement and function. Function, yeah. And a reverse shoulder replacement was often looked at as like a salvage procedure, may, procedure maybe only for older patients. But actually, with newer designs and increasing evidence and an increasing amount of time that we've been performing this procedure, the numbers have increased yeah. quite dramatically over yeah, the yeah. past few years. And you can actually achieve very good function with a reverse shoulder replacement. So if you were able to play tennis, golf, and or swim That was my next before, question, yeah, yeah then you are likely to be able to Go play back. tennis, play golf, and swim afterwards, even with a reverse shoulder replacement. And the anatomical. Definitely with an anatomical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's really even interesting. How many, if you did 100 of these, how many in your practice would be a reverse and how many would be an anatomical? That's a good question. I think that will vary between surgeons depending on the patient demographic. Yeah. Um, and so you tend to be that for, for younger patients um, who have... Uh, osteoarthritis or post-traumatic arthritis yeah. that'll often be an anatomic shoulder replacement right. and 
you tend would to you rather do that is that always your first option like you're looking at it going i i want to do a total oh bugger i can't i'm gonna have to do a reverse because they have no cuff are you always trying to do that anatomical first i assume if possible that would be my default position yeah yeah okay yeah. perfect now with knees and hips people say well they last 15 20 years what do we know about how long a shoulder replacement lasts that is a very searching question that one so um there is good data for specific shoulder replacements that they do last you know 10 years mm. 15 years 20 years even yeah but the data has not caught up with hip and knee replacements yeah because there are some designs of hip replacements that are still used now that were used 30 years ago mm. and they have good 30 year uh, data yeah and so the design and um, the development and the, the kind of progression of shoulder replacements yeah. is still going now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so we're not at that same stage where hip and knee replacements are, particularly yeah. hip replacements. Yeah. So there is good data for modern implants and in, one of the implants that I use, which has good 13 year outcome data. Yeah. But that's pretty long for an anatomic stemless total shoulder replacement. So it, we are it, using increasing numbers and designs and clever things to kind of overcome bone loss. Yeah, yeah. And the data, the long-term data, isn't there yet. Mm. So say I'm 60, I have a, a total, uh, anatomical, say I get 15 years out of it, what are your options after that? Can you do the same operation again? Or would you then need that to go... Another good question. And yeah. it really depends why it failed. Right, okay. So um, assuming that it's just worn out because... Mm. Ultimately, it's just mechanical. It's just metal and plastic, and at some point, it's just going to wear out through fatigue, and you've just worn it out by use. So the younger you are when you have a replacement of any joint, yeah. the, the quicker it's going to wear out because mm. your demands are higher. Not only are you going to live longer, but actually your demands mm. and use and muscle mass and function and sports and life... And your expectations of yourself. As well as your expectations. Yeah, yeah. But now we see that even older patients have very high expectations yeah. of what, what they want to do, and they have a lot of active hobbies and they play sports, Mm. But to answer your question, it depends why you fail. Sure, absolutely. And yeah. it depends if your rotator cuff is still functioning and intact, and you can determine that on imaging, determine it clinically, functionally on assessment. So and in theory, it, it could be, be repeated. You could revise that yeah. to another anatomic shoulder replacement. Right, okay. Or it may be that you can revise it to a reverse if yeah. the problem is that your cuff is now a problem. Maybe the shoulder replacement is not a problem. Maybe that hasn't worn out. Yeah. Maybe your cuff has now become a problem. Yeah, because sure. you just got older and your cuff has degenerated. And but if you've started with a reverse, obviously, can you then do another reverse? You can. Yeah, yeah. that would be your only option, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, I saw a patient today, actually, who had it done um, about 18, I think it was about 18 years ago, and they're still doing pretty well. So I think... I, I also. Yeah, I also find yeah, absolutely. I also I still find though that I've got a patient at the moment that I was gonna uh, that that we can talk about after, and I'm gonna refer him to you. But he's really quite reluctant because he he's about he's I think he's 63 if I remember correctly, and he's like, well, we don't really know what we're doing with shoulder replacements at the moment. And I think 10 years ago that would maybe 10 years ago that would be quite valid. But we have progressed a lot, haven't we, with shoulder replacement in the in the last five ten years. Yeah, I mean, massively over the yeah. last five, ten years. Yeah, yeah. certainly since I started practicing, even yeah. it's 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 um it's changed, and I think is that because of the technology? <clears throat> like, what's changed? How you do it, or um, I think part of it's the the improved understanding of the biomechanics. Yeah, part of it is uh, just newer designs. Yeah, you've got newer newer uh, technology, and we now have um, designs specifically to compensate for bone loss. And for, if you've got, maybe you've got part of your glenoid missing, you've got a bit of a missing socket or it's pointed in the wrong direction. Right. There are different strategies. And nowadays, we now use 3D CT scans preoperatively to plan all these operations. Mm. And you can upload that on the software and you can actually see 3D representation of the shoulder replacement that you're gonna do. You can plan exactly where you're gonna place the implant. You can plan exactly where you're gonna place any of the screws, if you're using screws. Um, and you can also even try to predict what that range of movement might be afterwards for the patient. I've seen that in one of your presentations. It's pretty incredible, isn't it? What you can, what you. What, so there's what a lot of exciting and interesting things going on with mm -hmm. shoulder replacement in terms of the technology and yeah. all of the technology, everything about technology. 
and now navigation that we're moving into. So intraoperative CT guided navigation where you can see on a CT scan in real time yeah. where you're placing your implants while you're doing the operation or even you can see it on a heads up display with augmented reality. Amazing. I mean, there's so yeah. much exciting stuff happening at the moment. Yeah, yeah. But all of that's doing is it's just trying to make this same operation more reliable, uh, more reproducible and more generalizable. Are you going to be replaced by a robot? Maybe. <laughs> One day. <laughs> Do you, obviously well, with knees and hips, they're first. using robots, aren't they, to help with the surgery yeah. in terms of, is that happening with shoulders as well? Not yet. Not yet. But, but you I think, think that there will certainly, it, it'll certainly come at some point. And whether that's the answer to everything, I don't know. I think shoulder replacements are slightly different than, uh, than hip and knee replacements. The mm. shoulder is just a very different joint. If you had, last question, Henry, if your shoulder was wearing out because of all the surgery you're doing, um, would you consider a shoulder replacement with what you see in the patient outcomes? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you've got an arthritic shoulder, which is painful, you've worn out the cartilage, it's becoming increasingly stiff, um, even for you know younger patients, mm. um, yeah, sometimes it's it's the only answer and it's the best answer. And even though you know that it's not going to last them the lifetime and you may need a further operation, mm. if that is your only option there to improve your function and quality of life, and if that can give you 10 good years, you can get back to doing the sport you want to do, mm. I'd say that's a win. That's I a totally win. agree. And the, the outcomes I'm seeing just in the last two or three years even, they're, they're really quite impressive. And I think it is definitely something that people should consider if they're in agony every day with their shoulder. They know they've got arthritis. They can't sleep at night. The injections don't work anymore. It's definitely a, a consideration, isn't it? Brilliant. Although you are biased. But anyway. I am. Thanks, so Henry. We, we won't start out with it. We'll start out with all these other things. And exactly. Again, like you'd go up that treatment ladder. Yeah. But yeah, I think I wouldn't be afraid of it. No, absolutely. It's Brilliant. Thanks very much. Thank you.